Hello there, everybody. My name's Paige, and I just recently had a big event happen in my life. My mom was arrested around eight years ago, and I was pretty shocked about the whole thing. In fact, I still am, even after this long period of time. But it's not just the fact that she was arrested. The reason she was locked up was appalling to me, and I discovered something really sinister around this. My mom's name is Patricia, and I'm not quite sure who my dad is, but I do know that he left my mom when I was very young. I never understood why he'd do this, but there wasn't much time to dwell on this subject as he wasn't an important role in my life. I also grew up with twin brothers who were three years older than me and a sister that was only a year younger than me. My brother's names were Leo and Owen, and my sister's name is Layla. I used to think that my childhood was decently normal, and here's why I thought this way. My mom always came home with food for the family and made sure to nurture and care for us. She gave us all the television access we could ever want. My siblings and I were also given a lot of toys by her sisters during the holidays, so there was no reason for me to ever doubt that anything was wrong in my household. The only time she was mean to us was when Layla and I kept asking her why the kids in the TV were going on a yellow bus all the time. But I'd find out why soon enough. Our routine was quite simple. We'd have the day to go out and play or stay home while Patricia was out working. And at the end of every week, my sister Layla and I were taken to our grandma's house to stay for a few hours. Unfortunately, tragedy struck and my grandma died when I was 12. After my grandma had passed, Layla and I had to stay at home or go to an aunt's house, which was rare. But because of this, I started noticing something a little weird. Good morning, Pat. How's it going, John? You know you guys are welcome to come in. We really appreciate it. A few police officers would knock on the door every week and my mom would invite them in to talk, introducing me and Layla as the neighbor's kids. I was thoroughly confused but felt that she'd get pissed if I spoke up, so I never did. The police would then follow my mom into her room so that they could talk. Patricia always explained to us that they were just there for legal reasons relating to a civil case involving my dad, and everyone bought it. I could still remember the day my mom explained it to me. Don't worry kids, I'm still sorting out different legal issues with your father. That's why the police have to come so I can talk to them about the situation. Now, don't worry, alright? Okay. Sure. Even though this felt a little strange at first, I soon got used to it. It became a part of my daily routine. I never noticed that something was off until one day when I was 14, when I decided to take Layla to the park. There were a few other kids there at the time, and they were playing happily on the playground. I joined them as well and I began talking to one of them, a girl named Harper. We talked about things like our families, and then she started asking me if I went to her school. I was very confused because, what is school? I asked Harper this, and she started to laugh. I didn't understand why she laughed, but then she explained that everyone has to go. Well, you go and learn a lot of things at school. You're joking, right? You can learn math, science, and writing. Really? I've never been there before. Is it like just a place that everyone goes to? Well, duh. All kids have to go. Are you sure you don't go? Nope. You must be homeschooled then. You're really lucky. But what do you do usually at home? Nothing much. My sister and I either watch TV or go to this park. Oh, and on Sundays, the police always show up so they can talk to my mom about divorce stuff. I don't think you're supposed to directly talk to the police. My mom got a divorce and that definitely didn't happen. Now, I was thoroughly appalled. Apparently, everybody else went to a place called school and I'd never heard of it. I've also been told that the police showing up was not supposed to be a normal occasion. I talked to Harper and learned a lot more things that I should have been doing. Later that day, Layla and I went home. Coincidentally, it was the end of the week, so we weren't shocked to see a police car in our driveway. What was a surprise, though, was that the officers inside the house were not the usual ones we'd seen. Mom was there, looking a bit nervous as the police sat with her on the couch. And ma'am, who are these young ladies? Those are the neighbor's kids. I am just helping babysit. Neighbor's kids? This was just strange. We are definitely Patricia's kids, not a random neighbor. But this new officer seemed to buy into her story and told us to leave the living room. So Layla and I walked to our room to have leisure time. As the two of us were just drawing, we heard Patricia yelling desperately. Confused, Layla and I walked out of the room to investigate. I saw my mom putting something into the officer's hands. He looked offended at first, 
But then Patricia said something else to him and his eyes landed on me. Now I didn't know what my mom said or why he was looking at me, but before I knew it, my mom had taken me to her room. The officer was in the room as well and I felt quite terrified. He started saying some really, really creepy things to me. This was when my life was about to change forever. You're a really pretty and young girl, you know that? Um, thanks? Your mom tells me you haven't had a boyfriend yet. Um, yes, this guy had the audacity to say this. He even offered for me to live with him. Of course, I didn't want to, so I declined. The officer suddenly turned very angry and slapped me. I was shocked and began to cry. Then everything became a blur. The next day, I woke up in my own bed, feeling dazed. What had just happened? I tried to climb out of the bed to find my siblings, but I immediately collapsed onto the floor. I heard footsteps running into my room, and it was both Leo and Owen. They had a grim look on their faces, and I didn't understand why. Are you feeling okay? Well, for some reason my back really hurts, and I feel like I might have a bad migraine. Oh gosh. Owen, mom's gone too far this time. We have to take Paige to a hospital. I didn't know why my brothers were so set on bringing me to the doctors. After all, everything felt fine besides my back and head. Leo and Owen did take me to the hospital as they promised, and this was the actual moment when my entire world came crashing down. The doctor told me that I'd been unwillfully used before taking my brothers aside to talk to them. I sat there with tears in my eyes. What did she mean when she said I was used? My heart sank when I realized that she might have implied something to do with that chief police officer. When Leo and Owen came back, they had very angered looks on their faces. I'm sorry, Paige. I know we should have told you everything earlier, but Owen and I were afraid that you and Layla were going to get heartbroken about what you're going to hear. And we also just found out some shocking news as well. Go on! Well, here's the truth. You and Layla aren't mom's real kids. She kidnapped you from a hospital right after you were born. The doctor just took a DNA test from you, and your actual parents are living on the other side of the country. Mom never registered you two because you weren't her children. That's why you never went to school. What? Yeah, and she's also been involved in criminal syndicate activities. You know, trading illegal substances, fraud, and all that nasty illegal stuff. But I don't understand. The police were always at our house. Why wasn't she arrested all the times they were there? Well, we did a bit of snooping back then. The police were sent here to investigate our house for any substances, but mom began seducing them. Don't even ask how I found out. I'm traumatized from that experience. The police ended up lying to the chief of police and started coming back every week just to get with Patricia. I'm sick to even call her mom anymore. I felt utterly and completely sick to my stomach. After hearing this, I grabbed Owen's arm from my strong urge to puke. How can my loving, sweet mom do something like this? She got so desperate to stay free that she ended up selling out my body to a police officer. But the crazy part was that my brothers weren't even done talking. I tried hard not to cry as Owen finished summarizing everything that was happening. And I'm just assuming that the police chief got suspicious that his men weren't even getting to the bottom of this whole case, so he came to investigate. But when Patricia offered herself, and even money, he got super pissed. Only when she mentioned you, he seemed a bit interested. And now you know how we got here. I'm so sorry, Paige. We just didn't know how to explain this all to you. But we promise we'll help you get out of here. To be honest, I was a little upset that my brothers hadn't told me this before. But now that I think about it, younger me would have freaked out. But now that I knew this, I had to get myself and Layla away from Patricia. When we got home, mom was luckily out at work. My brothers were able to contact the state authorities and explain the entire situation to them. I'm not even sure how they did, but as they actually went to school and were adults now, they were able to call them. We quickly packed up what we had and left in Owen's car, stopping at a nearby motel. About two hours later, Leo told us that mom was just taken to the nearby police station. We were afraid to go, but knew we had to. Seeing my mom again right after what had happened felt really weird, especially after finding out that she had been under investigation for nearly 15 years. Patricia immediately glared at my brothers with a look of absolute fury. She lunged at them, trying to attack. Leo! Owen, what the hell did you guys do? I watched in fear as the state police had to beat and drag her back into her cell. This was a side that I'd never seen before. 
Owen explained to me that things were about to get complicated, and they sure did. So I'm not quite able to say everything that happened, but I do know that me and my siblings had to testify against Patricia in court. She was found to be guilty on counts of bribery, kidnapping, substance trafficking, and a lot more minor ones that I couldn't name. Patricia was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Owen and Leo became the sole guardians of Layla and me, and Patricia was forced to pay up a sum of over $250,000. After telling the state police about the local police who had done all those obscene things with my mom as well, they took that information in as well. About eight of the police were put under investigation, and six of them were found to be guilty of bribery and got fired and fined a lot of money. Of course, the police chief was charged with assault of a minor and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Layla and I technically still didn't exist, but our brothers took care of that for us and we soon had an identity. We were put into special classes so we could learn everything that we had missed as kids. It took a lot of work, but we eventually did it. Now I'm at college and majoring in biochemistry. Layla is studying to become an English teacher, and life feels so good with an identity and an education. Of course, I've also had to go to a lot of therapy sessions, but slowly and gradually, I was able to get better. Owen and Leo had made it possible for me to meet my birth parents. It was a surreal experience, but to be honest, I'd rather not bring them into my life as my new mom and dad. I was already an adult, and this change would be too weird for me. I still love Patricia and how she was a nurturing mother for us, but what she did in the end was absolutely violating, and I hope to never see her again. As far as I know, she has been lonely and desperate in her prison cell. Even her sisters refuse to talk to her much and never visit her. She must be depressed now, but she deserve it. What do you think about the whole thing? Thanks for watching.